The Technologies of Harmonization and Enlightenment of Your Personality, Part 4 Good morning, dear reader. A human being wants to repeat the same thing again and again. A cup stands on a man's table with a tag happiness written on it. It contains two ounces of something. He says, this cup must be full. I have to fill it up. And he tries to empty the cup called sorrow into the cup called happiness. That's what he does, not realizing that this is Sisyphus' labor. What he tries to accomplish cannot be accomplished in this reality. We're going to discuss the illusion of so-called happiness today. How happiness turns into unhappiness. You're being offered different programs today under the slogan, How Can a Woman Achieve Happiness? Women organize themselves in groups, eliminate men from the field of their vision, and try to achieve happiness. One group leader offers one thing. Another offers something else. And they quarrel over each other's program. Her program is garbage. You will never achieve happiness if you follow her lead. Only my program will offer you happiness. I come from a long line of psychics. Come to my seminars. Here and only here you will learn what it means to be happy. What is this thing called woman's happiness? And how does it differ from man's or cat's happiness? Do women who go to the seminars ask this question? I doubt that. They just run there in search of the so-called woman's happiness. I just realized that woman's happiness and cat's happiness are somewhat similar. Both need to be fed, loved, and allowed outdoors when the need comes. This is an oversimplification, but you can't put it this way. It is more complicated than that. Each one of us was brought up in a family. Our parents have inculcated us with different notions regarding what it means for a woman to be happy. First of all, each one of you has been inculcated with a notion of what it means to be a woman. Only then the notion of woman's happiness was introduced. Let's take a look at the happiness of Joan of Arc. What kind of an upbringing did Joan receive? Why did she end up the way she did and didn't end up as an old happy French grandmother? What was her happiness about? Did Joan consider herself to be a woman or a visionary? Was her happiness happiness of a woman or happiness of a visionary? Did she consider herself to be a woman or a visionary? When you look at the way children were brought up during the communist period of Russian history, you notice that everyone was brought up and called a fellow human being a comrade at the time. The basic idea kids were inculcated with was the idea that one should perceive oneself and everyone around him as a comrade in building a communist society. Personal goals were deemed to be secondary at the time. What was the primary idea? It was the survival of the state. People belonged to the state. They were inculcated with the idea that their life goal was survival of the communist state. Everything changed since then. Nowadays, a Russian man scratches his chin thinking, who am I now? State fooled me. Communist party collapsed. Only dollars remain. And there are not enough dollars for everyone. Yes. Now, woman's happiness is determined by the quantity of these green pieces of paper. Woman's happiness cannot be determined by any paper. What determines it then? Woman's happiness is to be loved and fed. Who will feed you for free here? Go to a restaurant. Sit down and wait. You might get your food, but one way or another you will have to pay for it. You, Svetlana, will be fed, but that would be a temporary happiness. It will fast turn into unhappiness. I can show the rest of you that the scenarios of happiness that play themselves out in your heads in relation to this so-called woman's happiness are dual too. I understand now what has happened during our last conversation. I was painting my rosy pictures of happiness to you. You have cut them to pieces. I was screaming at you. Get your dirty hands off my dream. 
I can see how that happiness, whether it's a man's happiness or a woman's happiness, consists of two opposite things. That's how everything is made here. Otherwise, we would soon get bored with one side. We would get nauseated by it. Yes. Look at all these modern positivist psychologists. What do they offer? They offer you to realize your dream. They come up with a simple slogan everyone understands. Realize your dream. Then they build on it. A woman longs for a man. That's her dream. A boy wants to become a millionaire. That's his dream. A runner is dreaming of an Olympic gold. That's another dream. Those are our dreams, people say. How can we realize them? They're being offered different ways to do that. The runner is told, pin the picture of a gold medal to your bedroom wall and stare at it before you go to bed. He does what he is told. The boy who wants to become a millionaire pins a dollar bill to his wall and stares at it for 10 minutes before he goes to bed. A woman pins a photo of the man she likes to her wall and stares at it at work, expecting him to become attracted to her. Someone says, make sure it's not a paper picture. Make sure it's made from real wood. That's the only way for it to work. Who are you kidding? An old Russian babushka laughs. Don't you know you had to drink a glass of vodka before staring at the picture? Nothing will work without a glass of vodka. Next morning, an old man shows up. Nope, nope, nope. That's not right. You have to chase it with a glass of pomegranate juice. Hordes of people are running around. We have found a great teacher, they say. He says, we did everything wrong. We didn't cross ourselves. They run to church and get a cross. It doesn't work either. Let's look for another teacher, they say. Do you understand? That's how illusions develop. Something worse than that had happened to me. My dream was fulfilled. My dream man showed up in my life. But a month later, I was ready to kill him with my bare hands. That's another dream. You came to class dreaming of a man. Now you dream of him leaving. You must go to another class. By the way, the second situation is even harder. You have to pay a lot of money to use a restroom. Now you have to pay 10 times as much to leave it. Do you understand? You're desperate to use a restroom. You run into one. You got onto a toilet. You relieve yourself. You feel great. You want to get out, but the guards say, you have to pay to get out of here. It's a dollar to get in. It's a million dollars to get out. You spend a year in this restroom. Finally, you say, I can't take it anymore. You send letters to everyone you know. Please help me. Please send me money. I can't take it anymore. I have to get out of here. Look at what you strived for using this analogy. You strive for simple woman's happiness. You woke up in the morning and you didn't feel woman's happiness. After lunch, you felt full, but you still didn't feel happy. However, you see examples of this so-called woman's happiness everywhere, in the newspapers, magazines, on the TV. You compare yourself to these happy, smiling women. This is not you, and this is not you. You've been constantly showing up something that you cannot get. When you finally get it and experience it, it disappears. You can only desire what you don't have. And the more you don't have of something, the more you desire it. This is a fundamental principle our desire works upon. This is not just a desire. This is a desire to desire. The aim is not important here. What's important here is the state of desire to desire by itself. Again, the state of desire to desire by itself. When you finally receive what you want, this state disappears. That's how you, without understanding it, maintain the state of the desire. When you experience it, you say, is this the love I wanted? Is that it? Love flips and turns into hatred. Exactly. When it flips to hatred, you start to desire love again. This is the paradox. It's a perpetual mobile that will continue until you live through it, experience it in full, and understand that you were striving for an illusion. In the process, you experience depression and loss of meaning. 
you experience a state of despair. Assignment. Recall five situations when you were able to achieve what you considered to be happiness. When and how did these situations turn into unhappiness? Can you see that happiness and unhappiness always walk hand in hand? Happiness always brings unhappiness. Do you still perceive the state of unhappiness to be a mistake and start to run after a new object that would bring you happiness?